Hello there. Hi, my name is Ben Sassalini and welcome to the channel. Considering the mind-blowingly amazing fact that you, my friend, clicked on this video, a hypothesis was born in me that stated that you, my friend, are at least a little curious what this whole video is about. Well, if you are new to the channel, I'm going to say to you that we are going to talk about why we are extrovert or introvert. If you have watched my friend at least one of my previous videos, then you know what this video is really about. Chubby cat. Okay, but seriously, how can a cat be that fat and that cute at the same time? I just can't understand this. Okay, but seriously, sorry, sorry, okay, but seriously, we are going to talk about why we are extroverts and introverts. What is behind these personality types? How can one person be an extrovert and another an introvert? And can biology influence our personalities? Or at least we are going to talk about one approach to this topic. Short answer, yes, because of biology and brain stuff. Long answer, well, this whole video. By the way, I'm really happy that you're here and celebrating this wonderful union. I would like to say to you that thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner. If you get that reference, I love you. You know what? Either way, I love you. So, before we should talk about extroversion and introversion, we really should talk about can there be a connection between biology and our personalities? Can our biological bodies have an effect on our personalities? Well, yes, okay, that's great, but how can we test that? In psychology, we can examine individual differences on three different levels. First, on the level of behavior. For instance, one person goes to a party, another doesn't. Second, on the level of personality. One person is an extrovert, another is an introvert. And thirdly, on the level of biology. Oh, I'm gonna show it like this because it's much cooler. Oh, uh, okay. And thirdly, on the level of biology. One person has a different neural system than the other. Also, it is worth bearing in mind that there. Also, it is worth. Also, also it is worth bearing. Worth. Worth. Also, it is worth bearing in mind that three different system. Uh... Also, it is worth bearing in mind that three different systems is important when considering a biological base for a psychological phenomenon. Central nervous system, spinal cord and brain, autonomic nervous system and hormonal system. So, if we can connect these individual differences on all three or at least on two different levels, biology and one of the remaining two, then we can prove that biology affects our personalities and our behavior. So, in relation with our topic extroversion and introversion, we can prove that extroversion and introversion is affected by biology. Whew, okay, now that we have discussed so many things and a whole lot of mumbo jumbo that you don't really care about, let's relax a little with a joke. Knock knock, who's there? Interrupting therapist. Interacting to I'm in love with your mom. I mean, you are in love with your mom. Damn, Freud. I love making these videos. I really love making these videos. So, moving on. Once upon a time, there were two dudes whose name was named Burr. I can't speak English and it really hurts. Once upon a time, there were two dudes whose name were Hans Jürgen Eisenk and P.L. Brothurst. This sexy little fella and this sexy little fella. Uh, I couldn't find a picture, so I imagine this is how he would look like. These dudes thought that they would be the happiest people on earth if they could have rats as pets, so like every normal human being who wants a pet, they've created an experiment with rats. <laughs> okay, but the main reason behind this whole experiment was to test if rats has a biological base for emotionality, thus a personality trait. Because if they have, it means that even rats, whose brains are really similar to ours, by the way, that's why scientists really like to experiment on rats, even the biology and the bodies affect their personality. So then it must be the same for humans. By the way, the question, do animals have personalities, is really a complicated one, so let's just assume that they have a similar concept, a similar construct that we call personality in humans. So rats, emotionality and biology. How can someone test emotionality in rats? Well, through poop. I repeat, poop. I repeat again, poop. There were two group of rats, the ones who poop a lot, just like me after I visit grandma, thus emotionally more unstable, not me, but the rats, and the ones who doesn't poop a lot, thus emotionally more stable. Then the two scientists made them have sex with each other. What a terrible fate, what a horrible, horrible fate. Okay, animal rights are a really important topic, so it was a joke, it was a joke. So the ones who poop a lot had sex with the ones who poop a lot, and the ones who doesn't poop a lot had sex with the ones who doesn't poop a lot. So. Poopers with poopers, and less poopers with less poopers. I am an adult, and I just said this sentence. 
and the result. The rats who are less poopers had children who are much more less poopers, so emotionally more stable, and the poopers had children who are much more poopers, so emotionally more unstable. So in conclusion, personality traits are heavily influenced by biology in rats, so it must be the case with humans as well. Whew, that was a mindful. Jesus, it was hard to follow, even for me. So, let's just relax with another shitty joke. What was the mercurial cow diagnosed with? A mood disorder. <laughs> Jesus, man. Uh, it was a bad joke. And moving on. And finally, we have arrived to extroversion and introversion, and how can our body affect extroversion and introversion? How can our body affect these personality traits? So, I think this sexy dude again thought that maybe extroversion and introversion is somehow connected to arousal levels. Okay, but what is arousal? For example, when I see your mom, Arousal is basically the psychological and psychophysiological term for alertness and activation. The feeling of being awake and alert. The psychological state of alertness. So, for example, when you play football or see your crush or uh, watch a video just like now, your arousal level is rising. Also, if you pet a lion with one hand and play basketball with the other hand while seeing your crush on the other side of the road while the lion kicks you in the groin and explaining the theories of Einstein, well, that's arousal on speed. But what is more important is that arousal has a biological base, a biological structure which we can call ARAS or formation reticularis or reticular formation or as I call them alertness neuron boys. You can imagine it like a net, it is basically a net reaching to almost all parts of our brains thus managing the alertness and the activation. So let's continue our journey. Okay, but how are arousal and extroversion and introversion connected? Well, according to Eisen, this sexy piece of art again, like every other thing in our lives, this arousal level also needs to be balanced. So we try to balance our alertness and our arousal. Our body is also trying to find the optimal arousal level. Not high, but not low, the optimal. Okay, but how can we get activation to manage our arousal levels? We can have activation from the pre- We can have- We can have activation from the previously mentioned- we can have activation from the previously mentioned system, the ARS, the formation rhythm, ARAS. We can have activations with... We, we, we can... <laughs> Sorry, I'm extremely tense because I just, I'm just recording for two hours, maybe three hours now. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Jesus. But have fun. Brain damage. Ooh, brain fart. Ooh, enjoy being extremely exhausted. On with the video. We can have activation from the previously mentioned system, reticular formation, or as I call them, alertness neuron boys, or we can have activation from the environment. We can have stimuli from the environment. So, so we can have stimuli from the inner system, or we can have stimuli from the environment. But here's the kicker. The activation produced by the alertness neuron boys is not enough for us. It's just not enough. So how can we get enough activation? We need stimuli from the environment. Why is it interesting? Because extroverts have a lower level of inner activation from the reticular formation, so they need more stimuli from the environment to get that optimal arousal level. And that's why they go to parties and do extreme sports and engage in more social activities, because they need more stimuli from the environment to get that optimal level. While on the other hand, introverts have higher level of inner activation from the reticular formation, so they need less stimuli from the environment. And it's an amazing fact, I think. And that's why introverts don't like to go to parties and don't like extreme sports and so on, because it's just too much for them. Because their inner activation is enough for them, or at least almost enough for them. Jesus! It's mind-blowing for me. I mean, it is just mind blowing. Do you enjoy this as much as I do? Because it's just an amazing fact in my opinion. Woo! Psychology is amazing. Psychology is really an amazing subject. Jesus. 
So, it was a long and a hard topic. I extremely enjoyed this topic. I don't know if you did, but I extremely enjoyed this topic. I extremely enjoyed this whole process. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. By the way, I have learned this stuff like three years ago or maybe two and a half years ago, this whole extroversion, introversion, Eisen theory and so on, arousal theory, arousal theory, and uh, and I still enjoyed it. I, I still enjoyed reading my notes from back then and, and refreshing my memory and refreshing my knowledge from this topic. So, I extremely extremely enjoyed it and I think psychology is an amazing subject. I don't know if you can see but I'm thrilled and I'm, 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 I'm really excited to talk about this topic uh, because I really enjoyed it. So I hope you had fun. I did. I hope you like this video. I'm thrilled that you, you are here with me and watch me babbling about stuff. So thank you again. I hope you like this video and I also hope that you consider subscribing to this channel. I'm not gonna lie, it really helps out the channel, so click that button. And finally, tell me two things in the comments. Are you an extrovert or an introvert? And which kind of cat would you like to be? A nice cat or a jerk cat? You know, the jerk cat who sees a glass of water next to him on the desk and he knows that I'm watching him and he slowly pushes the glass of water on the edge and after I have said like a thousand times that please don't push this water, he just pushed the glass of water over the edge and it falls and it breaks. That cat. I think I would like to be the jerk cat. Okay, so love yourself and bye!